Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, as we welcome Cinzia Angelini, the filmmaker behind the film Mila. Please be sure to check out peacefilmfest.org for all the details regarding the schedule, tickets, and other updates. Our in-person portion of our programming begins September 20th through the 26th, and our streaming portion begins September 27th and runs through October 3rd. Again, please check out peacefilmfest.org for all of the updates. And now, please join us in welcoming Cinzia Angelini. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful to have you with us, Cinzia, and, your, and we thought your film is just delightful. Um, why don't you start by telling us about it? Sure, thank you. Uh, Mila is a short film, animated short film that uh, I worked on uh, with many, many people, volunteering, many artists uh, from uh, uh, more than 35 countries. It's actually, we like to say 350 artists, 35 countries, it's actually more than 350 artists, it's close to 400, uh, that um, fell in love with what we wanted to, to say and uh, our point of view of telling a story about war from a child perspective, of course, against war, against what happens to, to kids uh, in the middle of war, uh, the consequences that can be, not only physical, of course, but psychological. And uh, the film was inspired by my mother that was a child during World War II. And uh, as I was growing up, she was telling me often a story of uh, how she felt, it's more of a sentiment actually, a feeling than a story, how she felt during the bombings, how she could, uh, she was about five, five years old and she could not move or run or, do anything to were just frozen by fear until somebody would pick her up neighbor parents of course um, uh, and um, and this story kind of really stuck with me as i was growing up i was uh, also influenced by the balkan war in the 90s um, you know i'm originally from italy you might tell from my accent i was a young woman when uh, it was like a brutal war across just the mediterranean sea very close to italy on the yugoslavia and Bosnia and all the Balkans were going crazy. And that really influenced me. Uh, so when I felt ready to work on my film, uh, after many years of, of working as a professional in the animation industry, um, I wanted to tell a story with this in mind. So I couldn't really uh, write a story with a kid that could not do anything because, you know, as a filmmaker, of course, you need a character that is active and changes the story and the people around it, around her in this case. Uh, so I, I, I took that as a core idea of this fear. And then I picked on other, and I got inspired by other stories that my grandmother and grandfather and, and my father too told me about the war during those times in their city, that is Trento, Northern Italy, where the film is set. So it's a mix of events and things, and I created a story around it uh, with a proactive and you know character, of course, that changes uh, her future and, and and the future of a woman that saves her. Um, yeah, so that's how Mila came about, and it took you know ten good years. And uh, one other great things that train thing that happened uh, was that I was able to bring together the independent world of all these volunteers with a big studio like Cinesite, that is the studio that I work for. Uh, I'm actually directing the feature with them now, thanks to Mila, of course, big, uh, big uh, you know, thank to, to everybody because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everybody. Um, and yeah, and so Cinesite last year, uh, they knew about the project and they had a gap in between two productions and decided to come on board and help not asking anything, just wanting to help the, the great job. They worked 10 months on the film and they helped us bring it to the finish line, so. What a remarkable story about the behind the story. 
uh, it is such a personal um, um, point of view that that you know that is captured so beautifully and so delicately. This young girl's wide-eyed, um, you know, embrace of life, and then suddenly these external factors, um, you know, send her on the run. Uh, could you talk a little bit? I mean. I think it's remarkable that it was such a large group of volunteers and people collaborating on what an, uh, on what started as, as you said, this kind of family sentiment of of, of your family members' experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that like, creating such a beautiful, cohesive film with so many people collaborating? Uh, amazing and challenging at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to see, you know, emails coming from every corner of the world, you know, with uh, people wanting to work uh, because they really liked the story, they heard about it, they had uh, themselves experienced war or their family and they shared stories from their grandparents being the camps in World War II or their grandmother being stuck in Berlin after, you know, Berlin fell and you know, from all sides, and Mila really didn't want to be uh, political at all. We all know what happened in World War II. So we just wanted, I picked on, you know, I decided to choose World War II because it's kind of represents all wars. And uh, it was close to personally what happened to my mother because she went through that war. Um, but I didn't want to be political at all. So, um, Actually, the bomber is a bomber is a is a, a c combination of all the designs of bombers from World War Two. You know, we only kept 95, 91 because ninety one are the were the number of bombers that bombed uh, Trento those days. Um, so it was really uh, challenging, like I say, to go back to your que question uh, for sure because uh, everybody was in different time zones. This was pre. Uh, remote pre uh, anybody knew what was uh, like working like this and and especially before we had these amazing tools that we have nowadays um we only had the uh, you know skype at the beginning of skype and uh, emails at the beginning uh, and then a clunky forum that was great but you know if you look at back now and then when the apps started to happen it was like Whoa! you know we can actually <laughs> you know interact uh, live it's amazing so we started where really we had no tools available little tools available to be to to bring together a team that was spread around the globe um but beautiful at the same time because it was incredible to see this team shape up on its own because mila doesn't have a budget never had a budget uh, so when i started i started with very ambitious ideas because you know, I, I, I definitely didn't expect it to last for 10 years, but it did. Um, and, uh, and we kept going. And the more we grew as a team, the more it was impossible to say, oh, no, we're not doing it. You know, it was it became impossible. It was so much invested from everybody that it, I kept going. Well, it, the film touched me so much, but it seems as though just the process of you and all of your collaborators, it was also um, almost therapeutic, it sounds like, for everyone involved to be able to uh, to discuss the, like you said, not the specific issues, but the, the humanity um, within all these conflicts that unfortunately so many people have experienced. Yeah, and unfortunately it keeps going. You know, it's so relevant nowadays if you look at what's happening, for example, in Afghanistan and other countries. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it was incredible to, to see all these people from all, all over the world. Just, uh, just an incredible experience that uh, I lived and we all lived. And, and for sure, like you said, uh, it, uh, it became like a, a beast of, it, of its own, you know, almost like in a good sense. And, uh, and I think the secret that Mila is, is like it was a, a strong theme. You know, if I had a short that was uh, light and fun that I love, I mean, I worked on many films that are super great and, you know, mainstream films that are funny and so on, and that's great. But I think if Mila was 
you know, something like that, it would not attract uh, these hundreds of people to work for free. You know, artists that work on big studios, when they go home and they have some time to dedicate to a project, they want to pick a project that, that is very meaningful and is, you know, and, and detached many, many people. So I think that was the secret of, of the short. Well, this brings me to um, the mission of Global Peace Film Festival. Um, why I wanted to connect with this film is we try through our programming to bring models, ideas, conversations to people so that they can um, take these models and these ideas into their own lives and back into their own communities to make the world a more just and peaceful place. And um, your, you know, the, the teamwork behind this and the sentiment behind this and one of the major organizations behind this is UNICEF. So can you speak to what the, the larger goals for, for impacting people and connecting with people beyond you know, presenting a beautiful story, what you hope to, to see flow from this? Absolutely. Um, yeah, UNICEF Italy is uh, one of the sponsors. Um, so it's been done in association with them and they help support the film and spread the, 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 the message. Um, it's funny how I found them where I actually, uh, you know, I needed some, I, I was looking for an, you know, an association that would help me spread more the word uh, when I was still, you know, early on, but I knew eventually I needed somebody to support me and I found them via Twitter. That's the beauty of social media. I tweeted <laughs> like a direct message to the president of UNICEF Italy and it was super, <laughs> Uh, welcoming, you know, and I take, took a look at the some of the initial shots we had, and uh, I said, "Yeah, sure." So that's um, one of the things I learned that during you know these experiences also to because we didn't have any context really or money or anything, just to ask. And you can only get a no, so put the no in the collection and go with the yes when it gets to you. So um, yeah, but going back to to. To the point, basically, my goal is to show Mila to as many people as possible, and it's through festival like yours that uh, uh, really important to reach, you know, as many people um, as I can. I also learned um, many things from this short, and one of those is like it's so important to 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 sh to share with the young generations and the kids, especially before they are fully formed, before they are like ten or twelve years old um stories from other cultures from other people our, our other way of uh living because uh if we know we're not afraid you know when you don't know you suddenly you kind of uh, build those barriers those walls that are so uh negative for us to have in between cultures and across countries and so on uh and because of that i actually um had uh, talked at a couple of uh, TEDx and in Vail and in Italy in 2018, where I, the, the, the title was Bridging Cultural Diversity Through the Magic of Animation, actually. And there was a kind of a realization that uh, came about uh, because of Mila. Um, just seeing all these people, you know, coming together from all really corners of the globe and just, um, being united uh, to 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 talk about through their art uh, and bring attention to to a theme like this really made me think about if we share the more we share with the young generation the more we'll set up the future to be a better place i think you know um not knowing and being afraid is not going to help uh wars so this is something that I really want to do post meal is to keep going and, uh, and, and try to share stories that are really going to uh, bring people together and, uh, and um, educate um, about other different cultures that they might not know unless they travel there, but not, that, not everybody has the, uh, the time or the money or, you know, to, to travel. So I think animation is a great medium um, to, to share this uh, diversity with, uh, with the kids. 
Oh, very good. <laughs> so, so sorry. No, that's a wonderful, that is a really wonderful message. And, and Nina, I know you have uh, questions yourself. Yes. So yes, I, I wanted to ask you what's next for you and also how can audiences support your work mm -hmm. as, well as, as well as support the film Mila? Sure. Well, let's start from that. Of course, uh, um, visiting the, the website milafilm.com and taking a look at the trailer, uh, going to festivals like uh, yours you, and looking at the film, if they like it to you know, share with their friends and family, look at our social media and share you know, our posts and all and so on. So th those are the way to, to spread the message and, and spread the film, of course, uh, around. Um, in terms of um, uh, my, my future project that, like I mentioned earlier, I'm uh, directing a feature film called Hit Big at Cinesite. And uh, I also have other projects, one of which is uh, about the Zora Orchestra, that is um, an orchestra uh, created in Afghanistan uh, in the last few years. That is all about um, uh, all the members are young girls. And uh, so I have an idea for an animated film because Afghanistan was um, uh, without music for 30 years. Uh, but now that the Taliban are coming back, of course, uh, I'm really worried about what's gonna happen to the school, to the girls, and we're back to square one pretty much. So <laughs> that's a film that I really would love uh, to see uh, produced. So I'm working on that. I also have other projects uh that i'm pitching around animated project more like fun and light so um yeah so but i you know i think uh, using animation to talk about uh, difficult themes is something that i'm really passionate about and i think animation is a great medium to do that in a poetic way with kids oh agreed agreed uh and and Tinsia, we will most undoubtedly be following your progress and staying in touch with you so that we can push out updates about your future projects through our Global Peace Film Festival social media channels. Um, and thank everyone uh, for watching this particular conversation. Again, please check out milafilm.com to learn more about the film in particular and please go to peacefilmfest.org in order to check out all of the details and options for taking part in this year's festival. The in-person screenings begin September 20th and run through September 26th. The virtual streaming films begin September 27th and run through October 3rd. We thank you again and look forward to seeing you at the next GLOW. Thank you.